We are now live. Like ten. Welcome. Welcome to Burning Wheel. It's my birthday, so that's I'm sure why you're all here. Yes, happy <laughs> birthday, Grammar. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I brought presents for for me, but still. I got a book. Oh, is that making... a role playing book? No, that is a pizza making book. How to make your best Just as pizza. relevant. <laughs> First page. Technically blank. It's called Pizza Night. That's, that's, oh, there we go. That's what do perfect. they say about bacon on your pizza? Uh, basically, it's a common... This book, I read like the first few pages. I just got it like an hour ago. It seems to be a combination of do whatever you want and do this because this will actually be better. Do people taste things differently, but this is better. And they have things like... I'm looking... I only got to the dough chapter, mm. but they have a recipe for cauliflower pizza dough, which I very much want to try. I've had it. It's very good. Mm. And things like that. Yeah, it's very much about making like the Italian style pizzas where you don't actually have a lot of stuff on the crust. Um, to complement that, I got some gluten free pizza flour dough. Gluten free because I have a bunch of friends who are celiac, though I am myself am not. And some mini, mini deep dish pizza pans. Yes. So it's all going on. Then I got. Are you a, you're like a Chicago deep dish guy? Uh, actually, I like flat crust the best, but yes. if it's a mini pizza, I deep think crust. I like deep dish. As a Chicagoan, I approve. How do you pronounce it? Chicagoan? <laughs> Chicagite? Chicago. Well, we don't call ourselves Chicagoans or Chicagites. I'm from Calgary, and I we're Calgarians, so I think that's a thing. Yeah. Winnipegian? Yeah. Torontian? <laughs> Torontite? Like usually, when, uh, I got it. I got it easy. I'm just a New Yorker. <laughs> That's true. We we'll refer Chicago. to ourselves as our uh, favorite sports team. So, like, if you're a Cubs fan <laughs> or if you're a Black God damn it, that, fan, that makes thing. me something like along the lines of Hogwarts because I hate <laughs> sports. Like, I, I'm not <laughs> the Burning Wheel. Do not let your wheel burn. Yes, you Do notice there's no sports burn. skills in Burning Wheel. We need. Which I have a supplement so. idea, guys. <laughs> I have a burning wheel supplement idea. <laughs> burning well, well, the wheel. Only sports they have is like chess. It uses the burning wheel system, <laughs> but in the games. style and tone of sports animes. Sports anime. Yes, like the there's some tennis anime. I haven't watched any of them, but I've heard that there's a really good basketball anime as well. Hmm. Yeah. There's there's one uh, manga about bicycle racing. I know. I forgot the name of it though. What's it called? It's all about. I, I, yeah, well, I'm hit up I remember there. seeing that, and it's all about just long marathon racing. Apparently, the art is pretty cool with it. But anyway, uh, nice. Are we good to go? Yoamoshi pedal is yeah. the uh, bicycle. Racing. Yoamoshi pedal. <laughs> hey, I guess if we interested. have some shout outs, I'm just going to give a shout out to Acercon. If you like uh, seeing these online role playing games and you want to try one, Acercon is actually. A convention online, like Gen Con, where you can play oh. role-playing games over Skype and Roll20. That's awesome. So if you just want to do a one-shot, check it out. It's AetherCon.com. LaserCon? AetherCon. Like AetherCon? Aether. Okay. I'll, With I'll an type Aether. it in, in chat. In case anyone's the interested. Steampunk convention? No, the other one. The online one. Okay. Uh, I will Google I, I know another thing... That's hap- that's finishing up soon is the uh, I don't I think I saw Primark mention this but like have any of the other you guys heard like the Three Forged RPG design uh, Three Forged contest I don't Three Forged Three uh, no. it's like a RPG design system contest that like is going to be in three stages and so you yes. come up with a basic idea and oh, like, put right. it in a text file and then oh, yeah, so that yeah. deadline is Tuesday I think. Nice. Wow. Let me see if I can find that. Wow. Is it an RPG board? game? Because I thought somebody was making a board game for that. No, it's no, a contest it's, where you design an RPG. Okay. But oh, you design oh, a three... third of an RPG, okay, yeah. hand it off to someone else, which is randomly selected from the other contestants. They do the second third of the RPG, hand it off to someone else, 
and then it's done. Wow. That's the way the contest works. And then after that, it looks like everyone can, like, annotate, and then at some point, someone's going to, like... It's like a think tank, but for RPGs. Right. Well, Sith, your your camera has frozen. Oh. So I'm going to take a screenshot of that. The first of many. The first of many. It, it's a good pensive pose, though. Like, yeah, it's a fantastic pose. GM, it's so. just showing the spinning <laughs> wheel for me. I can't see it. Well, let me see if I can turn it back on. Right, just toggle it. Eh? eh? I see a spur. Maybe? I see a wheel. The wheel isn't on no. fire. The wheel is not on fire. <laughs> Dang it. Got a poser. Dang it. Now, now I oh, have man. to get that screenshot and put it over the, the spinning wheel. Yes, I think that's uh, required. That's required. Okay. So, assuming it's a ridiculous pose. I should... right. It's not ridiculous. Sorry. You need to make a quote. Sith, like, what industry do you work in? I'm an <laughs> academic. <laughs> it doesn't work. It's I, not funny. I, too, work in the knowledge industry. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, not yeah. funny enough. Hmm. But anyway, I guess we could sort of get started with the... So, yeah. Uh, I guess we came up with a couple ideas that I think are pretty awesome. Uh, Primark came up with a survey for all of us to take, which I thought was amazing to help sort of get our conversation going. I'm going to post it in chat in a sec. Let me go get it. Yeah. I don't know if uh, he wants to talk about it much, but it sort of was a you know kind of like a way to figure out what we all have in common. Uh to start the conversation. So like there's questions about like what kind of cultures do you think would be cool to talk about? What kind of government styles do you think would be cool about? What about climate? You know, are we going to be like in a desert? Are we going to be like in uh, a coastal area? Like, is it going to be Witcher European forest stuff? And uh, it kind of helps us narrow everything down. So it seems like we really liked the idea of having sort of like an archipelago uh, many different islands and stuff sort of near a big continent of some sort. And that's sort of being our main uh, world idea. Uh, personally, I thought it, it would be cool if like, it was actually like a fairly northern idea where like we're kind of like if, we ha- if there was like some sort of like archipelago that was like in between like northern Europe and Iceland. Uh, north of the United Kingdom, like it, 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 for like climate stuff, I think a lot of us were thinking about having some sort of snow environment would be really cool. But you guys can talk about that if you want. Yeah, I mostly wanted to be on a large continent because I had this idea of um, a kingdom, like on the shore of an ocean, and you know, halfway up a mountain range. Mm-hmm. So, I had this image in my head, and I, you know, once I get a, a, an image of a character, I try and, like, uh, make up the uh, surrounding areas, and, like, you know, what's the what's the things that excited him as a child, like, and that usually guides me to my answers to those kind of questions. Okay. How about you guys? Did you guys just go what you thought was cool, or did you have an idea of I, what I you like, wanted to play? I, I like the idea of diverse environments. I think being able to move to different places and have different environmental challenges can, can put different situations in play for the characters. Oh yeah, I definitely like diverse areas. I just posted the uh, link to the survey I used. I just had to edit some things so it didn't override our answers. If anyone decided to fill it out, I couldn't make it viewable without making it fill outable. So, oh, okay. there you guys go. Thanks. Well, I know for a little bit we were we were talking about more of like the Caribbean style, but it seems like we're leaning away towards that now. Well, I, I mean, let's at... let's talk. Let's talk about that. Yeah, 
I looked at yeah, let's, two let's talk areas. Culture and see. So I started like thinking like I know about how many cities I want to be on an island. So I looked at the ancient cities and I found that Sicily, a little island off of Italy, was like mm. the perfect size for our mainland. Like it would have five kingdoms on it and it would be like largely populated. And Sicily okay. is off the coast of Italy, so just got mountains on that. And then I took the size of Sicily and I looked at the Google Maps and there were like two examples of archipelagos that really fit. And the first one was uh, the Philippines, which has an assortment of like larger islands. And then there was, I think it was Guam, where Guam has one large island. And lots of tiny islands, like really tiny islands. Right. And I think somebody posted a map of Ursi. And Ursi yeah. matches pretty exactly to the, the scale of the Philippines. But I'm not sure, did you guys say that maybe we don't want to be on the, uh, the water now? Uh, I think we're good with the water. I think we've yeah. we've gone too far to reset to that. <laughs> right. I think we also really like the idea of, uh, like, uh, as you were saying, gold in the city states, but the idea of there's yeah. this there's there's and not so I, one great island nation. Um, right. There are a bunch of different ones with their own way of doing things. Yeah. Some big, some small. I do like the idea of within the island nations, one of them being bigger than the rest, or maybe a few of them. Like there are basically oh, major and minor ones. Yeah. Um, Almost yeah, like I mean, how the even... uh, factions work in like Stars Without Number or something. Yeah. There's a few that are like pretty good, but then there's a couple are like, hey, we have Cyber one thing. <laughs> I mean, we uh, can even go just... with a far off continent that has sort of a, uh, 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 an empire on it, so we can get into that later on if we want to. One thing I do hope is that you guys take me up on the suggestion that we should consider like the physics of the planet to be like Mars. That way we could have like the things jumping really high and really tall mountains. Um you want it to be Earth gravity? It, yes. Yeah. Yeah it 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 makes physics are hard enough on Earth gravity. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like physics. Uh, okay. I, I like being able to go back to my 9.8 meters per second per second for something falling. You know, but you take less when, damage when you when fall off the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> That's <But> it. <laughs> also, you know, like, uh, if you ever get into, like, a sea storm, how, how does the buoyancy rules float when you, like, exactly. it's the the same. Same. Boat made because of on the, this strange the, alien planet? The area of the water displaced is equal to the mass of the boat, and the mass would be less. The mass... Of the boat would be less, but also the mass of the water would be less. So it doesn't affect anything. It the mass would be the same, but it, the weight would be different. Right. So the mass of the water displaced would be the same. So it'd be the same volume. Hmm. So that that's, doesn't change that's getting, anything. That's getting too complicated, I think. I mean, we get, we got enough to worry about with uh, in-game yes. rules and everything else. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, First, it's not, let's learn it's not as bad wheel. when I played Then Herbs. let's learn Space Burning Wheel. And I used orbital right. mechanics to determine you know, all the, <laughs> the trips we made. That's awesome. Okay. You don't usually use I, calculus for GURPS, but I found a use for it. <laughs> I, yeah, but I think with the city-state idea, uh, Primark and I were talking a couple days ago that Golden got in on was the, like, well, we think for magic stuff that, like, we think most of it is pretty lo-fi, where it's kind of hard to get a lot of a lot of it, or most people don't know much about magic. There are, in fact, uh, a number of legendary items, which are sort of, like, uh, used to help control the islands themselves, almost. If, At least that's how I was. Yeah. If they're all magic the items, they're very powerful, and... Right. They're worshipped or used, and the, they all have narratives around them. Right, uh, right. There's also the mention of the continent, which is a big deal we have to talk about. Yes, yes. And so, 
with that, it was it was uh, our our thought that like, what if all of these city states or the empire sort of coalesced around where some of these legendary artifacts and items were, and then all of a sudden that sort of blossomed into a sort of Cold War scenario where everyone has these items that can completely change the landscape of the world, but no one's going to use them because they don't want to die. <laughs> the fantasy equivalent of weapons of mass destruction. Yeah. Right, right. And so that was sort of the premise idea we were coming up with. Does everyone sort of like that idea? Oh, yeah. I do. That's good. Yeah. And then things are changing now, though I think we agreed, if I'm right, because the uh, we haven't discussed how physically far apart this archipelago archipelago I can't pronounce this right. Archipelago. Archipelago. <laughs> Thank you. Um, is from a continent, but there is, we have discussed there being some sort of continent right. of uh, at least the, uh, at least the coast that we are familiar with, and the parts that um, us being in the archipelago um, archipelago know about it's one nation um, when mm -hmm. I, what I see when I think about this is a lot like a Nilfgaard from Witcher 3 sort of one united sort of force almost here um, we go again so we lost uh, con completely no I'm here oh okay, okay. alright that's fine if we're just your camera I, I, I toggled it. I thought video was still bad. All right, video, I still. Oh, I actually, it had recovered. Sorry, I should have told you. Okay. Um. So, what do you guys think? Is like, I'm thinking a recently united, um, and allied, uh, either union or single nation. Um, that all live on the continent, and then we don't know for sure as islanders, but there's a general suspicion that they may sometime come to invade us now that they're done invading each other. Right. right. I definitely like the idea of like there being just, at least to, to our knowledge, one sort of empire or kingdom or however we want to classify it uh, that sort of has to, in, in our world, a lot of resources and power to do whatever they want. And so there's this need to make sure we can at least threaten them in some way to say, whoa, whoa, we're cool. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. I think that was one thing we were kind of talking about, uh, Primer, is that do we, do we want this to sort of be like the beginnings of the Cold War, or we're still trying to figure out how all the city-states will sort of come together to, against the Empire, or is that loosely defined already? Um... Or I think we're sort of um, – I like the idea that we have uh, – it's ha probably been about five or six years and so since, since like the continent has united. And so um, ever since that happened, people have sort of been working towards uh, – working on their what if, it, what if they come here scenarios. And so it's like the, the foundation is laid but nothing has been built upon it. Okay. Yeah, that would that would put us in a good space for the island nations to try to, you know, make treaties with each other, you know, defensive pacts, that kind of thing. And that could bring in the uh the magical artifact angle where, you know, the the island nations have have this pact where, you know, if they start coming in and, and islands start falling, we're gonna use these things, and that's pretty much our only means of defense against this huge invading force. Yeah. And that actually brings up an uh goes right into another idea that we talked about. Um, I'm not sure if we got explicit, like, I like this from everyone, so uh, what do you guys feel about the Cabal, the organization, I think is what we've been calling it. We could just keep calling it. I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, I've, I liked it. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely for it. Yeah, I've, I've got there should be lots of studio organizations, in my opinion. Cool. So, what we were thinking was that um, there is a secret organization who specifically wants to uh, use like see, use whatever in this dark means necessary to bring together all of the island nations uh, in order to resist the continent when they inevitably invade. Um, and so they want all sorts of things. Firstly, they want political. Um, what's the word? They 
I'm forgetting the word. They want like political power um, in terms of being able to coordinate all of the different nations if they need to. They want magical items, um, which are a huge deal. And I like the idea that they're a thing, but not nearly as common in the continents. Like, right. They're uh, everywhere yeah, I, in the world, but for some yeah. reason, they're, they're more shed on the atom. Right, yeah. Like, I think that's what we were trying to equate it to in, in the conversations we were having before, where it's kind of like a weird faux NATO or like a peacekeeping UN type thing yeah. or something like that, but more on the low level. But you did bring up a good question, is that uh, for most of our conversations, we've been calling the islands city-states, but you just raised the idea of an island nation. And so, I don't know if you guys have thought about it much like that, or how the how the island political structure is, which is another thing we haven't really talked about is politics. Let's do that. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't I, think we have I to get into the specific politics of every single one because no. we can. That'll give no, us some yeah. leeway as GMs. Have we mentioned our what the GM is going to be like actually on stream? Uh, I don't think we have. No. Okay. Um, the GMing style of this show will be rotating GM. So right. all of us will take turns GMing, not every session, but probably every like arc. Um, this right. could be like every four to six sessions we'll change GMs. Yeah. Um, and we have fit our eight. setting and characters to be able to rotate out, uh, and it makes sense. So that is what it will be like. All of us will get a chance to be in the player seat and in the GM seat. I myself don't actually have the Burning Wheel book, so I will probably be last. By that time, I will almost definitely have the Burning Wheel book. Yeah, it's hard um, to get a hold of. Like, you have to buy it directly from Loot Crane because there's nowhere else to get them. Yep. All my FLGSs don't have it. They can't even order it from their distributors. So Man. let's hope for a Burning Wheel Platinum so if we get a new reprint. <laughs> Burning Wheel Titanium? Yeah. Um, what else? Burning Wheel Diamond? Mm. Um, yeah. So and Pearl. Oh, I like <laughs> Burning Wheel Hard Gold, <laughs> Burning Wheel uh, X and Y. There'll be yeah. two different Burning Wheels. Yes, one will be and... Burning Wheel, one will be Ice Wheel. Yeah. Frozen <laughs> Wheel. Um, I like the idea that each of the smaller islands, or actually I think, I think that every one except the largest island is an entire nation in and of its own, but that the largest one, which is on our hand-drawn map, uh, like a titan compared to the others, Mm-hmm. has multiple nations divided amongst it. What do you guys think about that? Yeah. yeah I, I think as a general rule, each each island should be its own nation, but there are probably exceptions. Um, cool. I like that. I, I do like the idea of like maybe a couple Fix. of the slightly less inhabited islands don't really have an overall government thing. You know, it's more a frontier or you know, like we're yeah. we're sort of like the lesser. There's mostly wilderness, and then a couple of people well, who managed to yeah. clear some of it. Yeah, I like That's that like as well. One city and like several villages, or just villages. Or like, I mean, like are we going to consider the villages area, to be city states? Yeah. Um, city states. If, if we're on the island thing, I think that city states can be their own thing. Um, but for like the smallest islands, they're probably. Um, oh, sorry, you can't fit a city on each each island. No, not everyone. But you can probably have some of them be. Um, what is it? Tra- like have travel here from another, from another no, city state, and maybe not necessary. Like, still have some ingrained loyalty to them, um, but not be like a part of them. One thing I want to say about this, though, is that something Zen brought up originally that I really liked was the idea of, like, having something like Venice or Bravos from, like, Game of Thrones, where, like, it's sort of like a floating city or a city in the sea. And so it's not necessarily on land or land that's always dry. Uh, Did you guys like that idea or, like, I I know we also sort of tossed around the idea of, like, having, like, maybe, like, uh, ideas where uh, wow, words okay, um, floating I, islands sort of or not islands, but like cities can float and so they're never always in the same place same thing yeah, that, that, that can even be a certain classification of, uh, of magical artifact that allows these things to be floating around 
not, you know, knocked yeah. around by storms and stuff. Exactly. Cool. Um, I think that's every. Is that everything you have to say about our setting? There's also we, uh, a discussion uh, of non-humans. I was about yes. to say that. Yeah. yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, I'd I'd like to keep them available because since this is kind of our tutorial type of thing, uh, I I'd at least like to dive into at least one PC that's non-human at at one point. Yeah. Sure. I'm planning on having at least one contact is not human. Makes sense. Oh, an actual contact? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what, 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 uh, what species? Dwarf. Okay. What are the dwarves like in this? I know, uh, we haven't talked Pyrrhic about dwarves kinda... at all. Oh, we, I think we did. I, uh, I had say some ideas, that, ideas, but it was yeah. a long time ago. <laughs> it was a very long time ago before we fully nailed down the yeah. setting to the details like, that we have. We now. have a better idea yeah, I, of elves because we talked about wanting to see elves, and right. I don't think we talked about orcs at all. And we talked. Something Do we want to about just not dwarves. have orcs in the setting, or at least not have orcs in the archipelago? I Arch definitely Pelago. want there to be orcs because I have some cool ideas. Okay. For when I'm GM, so maybe. They're like not bring in orcs, but have orcish influences. Maybe orcs be sort of an isolated tribe that we or someone else recently discovered. Yeah, they could they could yeah. even be on some of the more remote kind of feral islands. I mean, kind of thing. We're we're such technological. Or they could be like inner inner slow. intercontinental. Yeah, yeah, those are. Both well, they they could be the the ground force for the oh, yeah. empire at that at that rate. You know, or it could be like um, it, you guys played the Banner Saga. Yes, they're good. They could That's be like good. the Dredge, and they're what's pushing the Empire to come after us. That's very possible. Though the Empire can talk if they're if they're people, which the Dredge cannot. But well, the Dredge would be pushing the Empire. It was like in the Burning Wheel, the Dredge pushed the Nords into the human lands. That's true. And the Nords yeah. could talk, so I would say like the Orcs are pushing. The Empire into our lands. Let's leave th that a mystery for now, sure. but basically yeah. there are orcs. Well, it sounds yeah. like we could sort of leave most of it to mystery, like yeah. the elves. Like, okay, so elves live out in the deep seas somewhere, but we don't know much about them. But you want a dwarf specifically, so let's focus in on what dwarves do in society. Yeah. Well, I thought she would be an outcast. Uh, she's a... Um... Archaeologist, like I am. So she, okay, her actual well, I was, culture. I was saying more the the, city the cultural dwarves setting wouldn't for dwarves, matter. not yeah. Yes, it would. <laughs> okay. Now, for for my mind, I think for ease of use all around, I'm, I'm thinking dwarves mainly still live underground. We don't see many of them, but they do exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did say uh, we wanted lots of volcanic mountains, right? Yeah, yeah. My idea is that, like, the artifacts are... Some of the artifacts trigger volcanoes and yeah. have that sort of... They can they, they work on that level. And Would that's they another be like good thing. Uh, dwarf fortress dwarves, where they love going to volcanoes and making magma traps? Or would they be staying away from the volcanoes and living in, like, ancient mountain ranges that they How have lived both? in for millennia? Both? I wasn't. I, I like the idea that uh, Primark mentioned a long time ago. It was more of like the underground mountain ranges, or like the uh, like huge coral reefs that surround like a big hub that the dwarves have then moved into, or something. But I also mentioned Viking dwarves. I'm not sure if we're going to do that. Right. Well, we were kind of interested yeah. in the Nordic Mars thing overall. Mm -hmm, that's true so. at the time. Um, and that's another thing I like about ha having many mountains on these uh, this archipelago is that you can have a lot of environmental diversity, which yeah. is oh, yeah. excellent for us. You can have lots of cold places up high in the mountains and hills and then go down to the sea where it's nice and hot and humid and sweaty. And yeah, diversity is essential. I also oh, was cool. thinking of like like I put it on the map. I I put it south for some reason, but it doesn't have to be south. Like there's the idea of like you know like a always winter type area where like there's always that like ice magic item idea stuff. Yeah. 
that that is true. So it could totally be self for yeah. unknown reasons. Exactly. It could even be because... like Destiny, and there's a giant flying moon over there, and everything below it is ice. Maybe. A moon, it would be a small moon. It would be a very small moon. Yes, it would That's be. That's no moon. <laughs> oh, no, it's not. It's not. It's It's a very small Death Star. Very, very small. Okay. So, uh, what is... What? Well, actually, no, tell us about your dwarf, at, your specific dwarf, after we've established who the characters are. Sure. Yeah, the specific dwarf we could talk about later, That's but to talk we about. sort of need to figure out but yeah, where the dwarves, dwarves are. Okay. Yeah. So the dwarves yeah. just like mountains, and they like underground mountains. Do they live in underground, underwater mountains? That's what I was thinking. Under the ground, under the water? I like yeah. that. It, it makes it more interesting, because it, it would explain why we don't see them very often, because often they can't just dig straight up and find us. They have to come up through the uh, probably through the mountains themselves because all of the other dirt they would be too like soft and would like collapse on them. So do they have like Dwarven Rapture or Dwarven Atlantis? Hmm. I, imagine I don't think either. Neither? If it's under the ocean instead of in it, it would basically be like underground, only you can't dig up or dig in the wrong places or you'll suddenly flood a bunch of people so they're deep deep underground in like the bones like like the underdark in traditional D &D, basically cool i don't think and then the elves the elves lived on the underwater mountains they would actually live in the water they would live in the water somehow well i also think it'd be cool like if every once in a while not all the time but like there's the occasionally rumored dwarf raiding party or something where like they somehow come up in like bubble ships or something right and so like they almost just float to the top right oh yeah grab all the stuff I they can like, almost like in the night or something right and then and then by the time mornings come like Let's all go. the gold and metal is gone like, exactly. for a long a t- long yeah. time ago i saw this image of a boat sailing into a tunnel that goes underwater and that's just stuck with me for a long time so that this specific subset of dwarves that that can do all this stuff would they be mechanically advanced like they because they have these ships they're able to you know dig that far down i thought the, do the i thought the elves had the ship were we talking about the elves or the dwarves at that point when it comes to the ships the dwarves well if they're if they're using the bubble okay. ships to come up like that i i'm thinking that that either yeah. they're very magically inclined that they can do this or they have access to a technology that humans don't don't really have. I like that. Yeah. I don't think they have that. The rare um like not all it's not all dwarves. It's not like dwarves innately have technology in their heads, but it's that as a culture the ones that are underground do. They probably see us as savages and outsiders, which is why they haven't shared much of it with us. Hmm. Yeah. I think there's like legends of the, like an ancient super advanced city deep underground that is the heart of their empire. We wouldn't know. We wouldn't care to dwarven legends at all. I don't, I think they, like, we wouldn't understand. Maybe some of the dwarves, like the one that you know, that are no longer, that are no longer, yeah. or at least never were for their generation. Well, if you read the dwarf's side. life paths, any dwarf that adventures is no longer a dwarf. Yeah, It's just exactly. a thing right. built into right. Burning Wheel. And I don't see any reason to challenge that. I'm good with that. Yeah. Well, the, the other thing we have to keep in mind is that in, in Burning Wheel, greed is sort of a central thing to dwarves. So if, right. they had that, if they had that technologically advanced city, no one would hear about it. Yeah, because they, that's where they keep all their good shit. They would not. It's like their big vault. They're like the Borg. <laughs> it's like your technology is shit. We don't even want to bother with you. Yeah, I like this idea though. Like where, you know, maybe the dwarves didn't go down because of technology and stuff. They they went down because like maybe like since they're one of the older races, right? Um, maybe because uh, they were they were just there and then everything flooded up 
And so instead of going up the mountain, they went down the mountain. I like that. Sounds uh, good. So it's, you know, it, it harkens like some of that prior age that alludes to things that might be underwater that we don't know about. I like the yeah. idea of that, and I like the idea of underwater ruins a lot. Cool. Cool. Good stuff. So, uh, at some point, I think I'll talk about some specific cultural traits for dwarves, but I think that'll be much later. <laughs> yeah, when it matters. Yep. Uh, the if we are after we're doing this, uh, if we do cultural traits, we'll probably want to do continental, maybe the big island, and then the small islands, maybe as the three groups, yeah. or maybe just. Well, I switched you guys general. over to a uh, new map page or a new page in Roll Twenty. If you guys want to start doodling, like where islands might be that you want, or distances and scales. Well, so. I'd like to show you guys a couple of things on Google, if that's all right. Okay, sure. Yeah, just post the image links in Roll20. Well, I'm just going to share my screen with you guys, I think. Okay, Skype. I there we go. can do that. Um, normally, you're not broadcasting video to us. Oh, did my video stop? You, I don't think you ever were. You're broadcasting video to the stream. Oh. Okay, I can see what you're talking about. I can see... You can see my screen? Yes. All right, where's Skype? Here's Skype. Let me just adjust your cams for a second. Okay. Um, it looks like it's only going at about one frame every second or two seconds. So you'll have to show, you have to, like, once you put each image up, wait for a bit. Oh, yeah, I will. It's still, uh, it's still just sort of circling for me. Did we lose okay. 10? No, I'm no. I I don't see you anymore. I don't see the video. Of, yeah, it's it's because the um, uh, oh yeah, partitions out the screen real estate. So oh, is that it's just strange because there's so much there's so much space, but it just doesn't use it. All right, let me share this window with the stream. Like even with that, only about half my screen with Skype is full screened uh, is actually yeah half of my screen is blank space that they could use. Yep. Yeah. Alright, so let's go to maps. Going to Sicily? No. Well, I can't go to Sicily. I I discounted Sicily because there were no small islands around it. Well, I I don't see where think we're doing anything specifically verbatim. We're just taking the ideas no. and concepts. But I want to... So if you um, like something specific from them, we can just steal it. Come on, Google. It's being slow. What's wrong? I mostly want to show you guys, like, like the relative size of the islands. And how far apart they are. Uh, but apparently Google Google's like just like, right nope. Now. Okay. You betrayed me for Skype. You're not using Google Hangouts. Screw you. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? Do no evil my ass. <laughs> okay. Well, it's working in Firefox. Like this is so I think 100 Japan, miles. Uh, right. So you see that we would have like one big island and a whole bunch of small ones. There's also the question of like how far we can travel in a day. I did some research and it looks like we could expect to travel 200 miles in a boat in one day. So if we have a world of 100 miles square to explore, we could go anywhere in that world in the day. Are we cool with that? Hmm. I mean, that's... Assuming clear water, yeah, you can you can totally do that because you don't have to actually be awake while your ship is moving. Right. But, I mean, if we have any kind of reef or anything like that, you need... You need light. Like, you don't want to sail in uncharted waters at dark, right? Because no. you'll die. No. In six hours, you can make 100 miles. So this but is also, it, it seems like. like one of those things, right? Like, like where you're in the middle there. Like the idea of being lost at sea seems kind of hard because no matter what direction you're going to go, you're going to hit land. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't think we'd be lost at sea in terms of not like 
stranded, but in terms of not knowing where we are. So we would have to land and then like maybe find a high ground and get a scope of things. But yeah. it's only when we if we get washed out from like away from the archipelago that we would be in some serious danger. Mm-hmm. Oops. I know Winnie is way too big. Um, well, one thing uh, if I want to talk about that, if we're talking about like how quick to move things, like how yeah. um, uh, ocean currents, right? Like yeah. the, where, where the stream, where the jet stream is maybe. So like we know what would be easy to get to and what would be hard to get to. Like I don't know about a lot of this personally, uh, but it would, it would make sense that like we would have to know how the ocean currents yeah. flow through. Right. Yeah, and prevailing winds and stuff, because I, I imagine mostly it's sail yeah. propulsion. Yeah. Yeah. I know also we played a lot of images of atolls. And atolls aren't really islands. You know, they're like uh, little reefs. Here it is. Here's what I wanted. I couldn't remember what it's called. This is Fiji. No, Fiji? Yeah. And, I think and that gives us our snowy mountains as well. If Fiji you wanted to be lost... At sea, here we go. Um, where's my s- distance taker? This arrangement seems more like what I was thinking about in my mind uh, than the tightly clustered stuff. But we could have the clustered stuff as well if you guys want. Yeah, we can just add more islands and make them more tightly clustered. Yeah, like this I was thinking the awesome. Just, uh, I was thinking a little more sparse, right. like the Fiji screenshot here. I Let's see, 100 miles. Whatever. Where's 100 miles? There we go. So as you can see, they're also like a lot more spread out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm digging this arrangement a bit better. Okay. And this makes more sense to me for the idea of like city states where everything is sort of autonomous. Right. Versus something more collective like the Philippines where, you know, they would have daily interaction with other city states. Instead of having them on the map. Right. We could say, like, yeah. these, these are the islands of note. <laughs> exactly. Uh, All right, we're back. Sorry about that. I don't Hello. Know when it cut off, if it even did cut off. But... Ooh, that, that clashes. You want a different background. You want a different blue? Different blue. It clashes with the green, a darker blue. Sorry about that. That's fine. That better? There we go. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Hmm. Well, you want a dark blue, huh? Hmm? A What's very dark blue, huh? It, it's just it's enough water. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I need to zoom out even more. Wow. There we go. Okay. So I think we have a basic thing for the setting done. Mm-hmm. So would we want to introduce our well, characters? I mean, we, we've got out. geography down. Um. Right. I think I, w- I was going to say that uh, we would work on the culture city-state stuff once we figure out as, as, as a way of placing our characters in the right. world. Uh, and then sort of figuring out where all that, how that all works. I feel like but we can talk about some important. of it loosely if you want. Like, Burning Wheel is a game about uh, the character's beliefs. So there needs to be cultures that let us challenge those beliefs, like... Do we want? Do we sure we want to make up the cultures before we know what our beliefs are? I think let's do the characters oh. first. Okay. Um, so in my mind, doing the characters is not doing the beliefs. The bits are going to be further at the end. Uh, yeah. But like the life paths and stuff kind of help help us figure out what we want to focus on culturally. Uh, and so it'd sort of be like introduce sort of characters and the life paths then sort of talk about how we're in the world, and then from that we get our beliefs and cultural traits, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, that makes sense. 
Yeah, I think so as well. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Now, j- just as a, a general question, do we do we want each of our characters to be from basically the same area, or do we want to like define the different areas based on our characters? My character is going to be from the continent. He's going to be an outsider. I am leaving that guy up to you. Uh, I know my guy is going to be a little weird because I got really interested in the uh, the seafaring life path thing. So he's like the son of a gun. So I don't okay. really know if he's particularly a part of any city state or if he's just sort of like a almost like a spacer type thing, right? In this sense, yeah. where he is always going lives. to be a mercenary. Yeah, yeah. We don't. But before that, he was, we don't have any wars anymore, though, in our city, do we? Not oh, all out wars. We have like the the Cold War and the tension rising, but we don't have any that we know of. Maybe some small like tribal wars or between city, city states, states, but not war? no big wars. Okay. So like, well, it's also one of those things, right? Where like, there's a lot of so so called international waters, and there's a lot of trade between the routes. So most people don't want to mess that up. Yeah. Piracy is a thing, so yeah. Privateers would therefore be a thing. Yeah. Or kind of like with the uh, some of the uh, English tea companies, right? Where like they would sort of like quote quote contract certain people to arrange, you know, certain certain trade routes become slower over time. Basically, and that's just yeah. All right. they say about it. All sorts <laughs> yeah. of fishy business. Right. Lots of lots of letters of mark and that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I wanted to hear what you said about that because I thought it was important. Cool. So cultures. So I'm thinking that the uh, the evil empire. It sounds a lot like ancient. Well, I thought China. we were going to try uh, our characters first before the. Cultures. Oh, okay. We are all right. Our, our characters and the cultures, then the bits. Is that right? Oh, sort of like life. Yeah, unless, unless okay. you guys want to. Yeah, sure. Do let's something let's else. Put it that way. Yeah, I I think doing a characters first is will be easier because we can use that to inform the culture a little bit. Like, if this type of person comes from this culture, then how does that culture produce this person? Right. It would it would also be like you're the only guy from the Empire, Primark. How is the you know like yeah, yeah exactly. So yeah. it gives us sounds good. agency yeah. for some of the stuff. Cool. All right. Okay. I'll go last for my character introduction because one of his things is very heavily dependent on the other characters. Okay. Who would like to go first? Um... Yeah, I guess I can. Um, okay. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I can go first too. If your were, character is based off my character. Yeah, I would. I want to go last because there's one important aspect of my character that'll probably relate to Golden's character, but okay. I might switch it to someone else depending on what fits best. Because I know who Golden's ca- character is, but I'm yeah. not sure who the other two characters right. are. Okay. So, so right. FYI for anyone in the stream, uh, we've kind of been looking at earning characters for a while just to get a sense of the system as anyone pseudo familiar with burning wheel. And so everyone right now in roll 20 can see everyone else's characters and all the burning paths and everything. And we have our characters almost entirely already completed. So there's no long process of burning them. Right. It's already done. Okay. Uh, so So you go first. Alright, yeah, so I, I kind of more focused on the, uh, this organization that we've been talking about, the, uh, the, the people that are kind of trying to get the islands together. And, um, pretty much decided that I wanted to play someone that was helping them smuggle, uh, you know, e- either the magical artifacts or resources and, and help them solidify their power that way. Um, so I did end up with a with a smuggler character. Um, he's, do you want me to just run through like life paths and stuff, and then go from there? 
Oh yeah, go through your sure life paths and tell us why you pick them. All right. So I would I went with someone who's city born, um, because I wanted someone from you know that has a tie to a major city within the uh, within the setting. Um. I, I have this idea that the culture he's from is, is sort of, they put a, a bit of an emphasis on education. So he became a student um, for his first life, for his first actual life path. Um, then he went into Archer because uh, I also think that this, while they put an emphasis on education, it's, it, Probably a smaller island, so that you're pressed into military service at a certain age. Okay, so is that a lead? And uh, yeah, okay. and after he he was an archer for a while, um, he had one of his relationships, which I'll get into later, is with someone who was a quartermaster who was drummed out for you know selling supplies kind of illegally, and uh, so. He got kind of caught up in that whole nonsense and was kicked out and became a smuggler when this quartermaster became uh, a fence. You know, he, he became a, a criminal who was selling stolen goods. And so, like, he and he and my character have been working together sort of on their, under the radar smuggling and selling uh, valuable items. Cool. Okay. What's your character's name? Uh, Right now, I I think uh, if it goes how I am envisioning it, I think he's been approached by the organization previously and has been smuggling for them for a little while, up to the point that he's sort of a trusted agent at this point, but not privy to any of their actual plans. Cool. Okay. Okay. And uh, what's your character's his, his name? name is Nico Zolas. Okay. And I had that ready, so now Nico is right next to your name. Okay. Uh, uh, as far as skills go, um, I opened up astrology, being that uh, as I was burning this, one of the one of the uh, required traits was paranoid and. Uh, I think he's, it, that's going to be expressed in more of a, you know, the stars are not right for these kinds of things and we shouldn't be doing this. And it, it's very much a supernatural paranoia. Oh, do you have the superstition in a way? Still? Yeah. Nice. Interesting. Yeah, that's one I couldn't get. No, astrology is a, a double handed sword. Anybody that doesn't know, um, astrology is always an open ended role. So whenever you roll it, you re-roll your sixes. However, it's also open-ended the other way. Any one you roll, you re-roll that as well, and you can subtract failures if, if you, you know, keep rolling low. But it can be forked into any skill that you do that is that is not physical or combat related. You can read the stars about anything. Yep. yep. Right. Cool. So basically, if the stars are right, I can lie to people better. But is it, uh, I'm trying to remember if astrology required tools? Um, that's on my, uh, I will. my sheet. Okay. Let's see, astrology. I did purchase a, a skill kit because I'm also a forger. Uh, where did Astrology. There it is. Uh, yes, it does require tools. So, like, do you have the bones? You roll uh, the bones? It could even be like a, a sextant or, you know, something that you consult the stars with. Oh, okay. um, right. chart, star charts, that kind of thing. Cool. Um, that makes sense. I was just throwing it out there because... Uh, yeah, yeah. I I actually it, wish the character sheet had a little checkbox for needs tools. Yeah, that'd be yeah. nice. That would make it a... Anything else about but, your character? Um, yeah, um, he's 
got B five bow. He, he's you know he's very well trained in, in uh, archery. Nice. Um, he's got a decent forgery skill, and he's good at persuading and lying people. And he's also um, pretty stealthy. Okay. Cool. As far as traits go, um, I had to take paranoid and rabble rouser. Um, and I also looked into sixth sixth sense if we want to use that in this campaign. That's the um, the GM will basically tell you you have a bad feeling about this if if something's going to go horribly wrong. Full on Han Solo. Yeah. Yep. Nice. And it's going to be interesting. Quiet. All right. Quiet. Well, let's okay. take our first break. No, um, let's I'm go gonna, back and introduce the other characters. We're going to restart the stream. And then we're going to take a five-minute break, and then we'll be right back. Okay?